in the messy shop got our 1500 got the 2000 and what I'm gonna do is tack this 2000 in half I'm really really stingy with it it doesn't take much and it's not cheap so we're gonna get some 1500 some 2000 5000 and some 1000 and we got some really soapy water Okay, now these lights are not too bad. They're in pretty good shape. However, I have no idea what you want to do with these. Huh? I have no idea what you want to do with these. Oh, dude, this is going to look awesome. Let's pop the hood. And you want to get as much paint out of the way as you can. I don't think I have masking tape. And if I don't, I may improvise a different way. I do not, of course, have masking tape. So I'm going to use my skill and do this correctly. Uh, left hand side, yellow knob. Left hand side. Yellow knob. Your left hand side. Left hand side. Yep. Okay, now I've got a 1000 sticky foam disc. This is supposed to be put on a DA orbital sander. I've got a 5,000 sticky disc. I've got some 1,500 and I've got some 2,000. Get this down in water. It's the main, main thing. Um, could you get me the, um, either the final wash or the green, no, either one, either one. Pink or green? There's a 15. Our 2000 fold them up a bit and you want to get I actually didn't fold that like I want it you want to use a couple different surfaces and with this type of a thing you can kind of I do like to smell that okay now this is gonna make our wax job look bad now you got to figure I have used this one a bit so even though this is a 1000 grit I've used it so much that I'll bet you the 1500 is going to bite in more than the other. Now you want your wet dry sandpaper in a soapy solution like this from the start. So get the entire lens wet and start with the lowest you got, which I think would be the 1500. And sand that thing down. Now I'm going to start kind of in the edges and I'm going to try and keep it away from the paint. Now you can see all that stuff coming off of it. That is quite simply bad plastic. Now when you're done here, this is gonna look like crap, which is awesome. Could you get us the, um, the hose and kind of turn it on? Just very lightly. Now this is very easy to do. Don't buy no special kits. Um, if you've got a good cutting waxy solution, that will work. Now, I didn't take no befores on this, but I will from the other one to where we're able to tell. Around the knobs is a part that you're really gonna have to hit up. And now if you were to see this right now, you wouldn't be happy with your work, I don't think, because it is going to dry pretty yucky. But all that is plasticky, gunky, yucky stuff rolling off. It's going to dry foggy. Crimp it, if you would. Crimp it. Crimp it off. No, just crimp it off. The foam pad, honestly, you can get a little bit more aggressive with. And I'm hoping that the, there's enough of the 1,000 left to really get in here. Now, you can take it too far, likely. No, I'm on the stage, on the buffing.
this is pretty hard to take it too far on unless you start scratching up your paint. Thousand, gonna be very hard to get out. 1500, you can get out pretty easy. Any of the scratches, um, thousand's pretty hard to get out. Now I have completely done this. I'm gonna lightly hit this one up and I'm gonna give the orange just a little bit too. Go ahead and wipe it off real quick. Okay, so, now as this thing dries, you're gonna see little tiny scratches everywhere. And what the idea to do is, you really need like, you could do this with 1500 and 2000, pretty easy. Um, I've got a 5000, so I'm gonna do that over it. And basically you're taking small scratches, and putting tiny scratches on top of it, and then tinier scratches on top of that. And then really when you're buffing something and polishing it, all you're really doing is scratching it up a bit anyways. So now you're adding even smaller scratches everywhere. And another very important point, if you don't have a foam pad, watch your finger pressure. Stay as even as you can, and even a little foam block in between this stuff is ideal. If not, you could get extra hard places where your fingers are meaning your finger connects more with the surface than the other flat spots, and you'll get ridges. And it kind of sucks, so be careful of that. Now I've been out here about nine minutes and I just heard my little doggy bark, so I'm going to have to go take care of her. And everything you did with 1500 and stuff in 1000, go over again. Now I did get a feel that my 1500 was more poetic on this than the 1000 looks like the water and it's good to keep it clean in between now this is going to be a very good for instance you can see scratches i'm actually going to let this dry a bit to where it's all dried off seriously in the sun it ain't going to take long i'm just going to wait for it And honestly, it's going to be harder for the water to run off of it now because of what you've got. So I'm just going to use this real lightly. And now it should dry within literally seconds. Okay, now look at what you've done to your light. It looked like this. <coughs> And now it looks like this. You can see good and up close that this is scratched up. And that's exactly what we want. So I'm gonna go for a picture here for my before and afters. And this won't be an after, it'll be a mid. Yeah, it's just foggy as can be now. That's exactly how it should look at this time with what you've done to it. Look at what you did! Okay, since I've got the 5,000, I'm gonna use the 5,000. Don't use none of this stuff dry. And you do wanna use a soapy water solution. And that will get more glide in between your sandpaper and your lens. Now, Turtle Wax, Meguiar's, 3M, I've seen all kinds of people out there that sell a kit anywhere from, I don't know, if you find them low somewhere, like 10, 12, 13 bucks, all the way up to like 29, 49 bucks for this. That's not needed. You need this and a really good polish along with a high-speed buffer. That's all you need. Now, honestly, this one, that needs replaced. And I'm not doing that on this car because it's a project car that has other things that need done on it. Okay. Spray and wipe, I guess. Okay, now that's all I'm gonna do on the sanding. Uh, make sure you get any little overspray of that grime off of everywhere and wipe it too with your hand. And 
You just don't want that stuff sticking on there because it's easier to get off now than later. Plain and simple. Okay, that is the buffing of it. It'll turn out a little, now see clear is how basically, that's a preview almost of how it'll look after you put the polish on it. And I'll show you the proof here in a minute. I'm actually gonna turn this off and clip more in in a second. Of that light, how it was more scratched up and more foggy. And that 5,000 really brought it back. Oh yeah. Big time. So it is neat. You can do it all with this, but it will be, oops. <laughs> How did your finger get taken out? I was playing around with a wrench. Okay, now, I would say that was our second car with this. Can you make sure she's in the shade? And if she's not in the shade, drag your cage in the shade. I've got to complete this. And Breeder wants attention. So, here we are. You can see how much brighter it is right now. Now, I am going to sell a system like this. The only difference is, is mine will be in a bigger canister. This is an old, this is the best aluminum polish around. I don't have anything better now. This stuff here is very gritty. And yeah, don't take much. Don't ever get this stuff on your skin. But the second use for this is anything on the car that's really, really oxidized. Now, a really big warning on this, if you buff it too hard or too long in one spot with this kind of a high speed buffer, you can't use the weeble wobble ones. It ain't gonna work for you. And when you use something like this, if you set it in one place too long, remember you're buffing plastic. Here we go. Now foam on this one is the big difference. We'll see in the shade. Okay, now that is done deal. End of the story. I'm gonna grab this and take a picture of it because that's what you should have. It's a very quick process. I don't know, 15 minutes to do both lights. And that's why it's hard to make videos like this, honestly, is because you get to where I could do the whole job quicker. By the time I get to making the video, putting them together, clipping and editing it, stuff like that, I could just make and do this job in one, one sixth of the time, almost every time. I was talking to my buddy Brian from Two Wheel Obsession. Check his channel out. And we were talking about just that. It's hard to do these videos and actually make it worth your while to justify the job taking longer. Okay, now that is a huge difference. Amazing difference. I'm gonna show up close. And here's the after. Just night and day, that's all there is to it. So any of them you got like this, it's an easy, easy do, especially if you've got some of the tools already around. Look at that! I mean, look at the other side. OneOwnerCarGuy.com, this car will be for sale. More links at the end to other kind of detailing things, and the stuff, like I say, it ain't gonna be a little canister like it. I'm gonna sell it in a big old tube like the other one. The kind of stuff that you use for the first stage, you do the whole car in when it's in this shape and you mix it with other stuff and whatever. When you get all that side up, there'll be a link in here somewhere. You can check it out. You can get to it through Hipster Cars. I have the best detailing products around that I've mixed up and came up with like three or four different people's stuff and some bulk stuff and there ain't nothing better. Thanks for watching. OneOwnerCarGuy.com. I gotta give you an outro looking at the old one. I mean the new one. Woohoo, buddy. We'll talk to you.